We are back. A little dropkick Murphys. Never hurt anybody. If you missed any of the program so far and you really want the nitty gritty, we had Tarpley on for an hour. We kicked out the jams the entire first hour just going through this stacker and uh, really analyzing a ton of videos, including the new Obama song, School Children Singing About Obama Healthcare. And there's a great dance number in there, let me tell you. Choreographed very, very well. And the propaganda continues. You can get the podcast over at theinfowarrior.com free O charge after the program. And if you're a prisonplanet.tv subscriber, this will be logged via video, the entire three hour program over there as well. And of course, you can always wait for the YouTube where select clips are posted uh, by the Info Warrior people over at YouTube and many of the other great fans and listeners out there before i get back into the stacker i really do want to finish up on this video being promoted by john elway uh, quarterback extraordinaire and as who said really solidified himself as possibly the greatest quarterback of all time i mean uh he, he could throw he could run he could do it all he was john elway and now he's telling you you're the terrorist whether you like it or not uh, september 11th changed everything and it's something we'll have to live for with the rest of our lives Let's continue. It is another key step in terrorist planning. Have you ever been on a bus or a light rail and noticed a bag that has been left unattended? This could be an example of a terrorist determining how long it takes for people or security to respond. Terrorists also frequently trespass into restricted areas to test security. It is vital that if you witness someone engaging in these activities, you should report it immediately and call 911. Let's stop it right there. All right. What they just showed was a woman on a ranch... And a guy coming up with a tool that breaks chains. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm on a ranch and I'm riding a horse and some, you know, Johnny Nonsense comes up and clips a steel chain, kicks it and runs away, of course I'm going to call the police. I mean, it's not like I'm going to keep it to myself. There's no need for this. It doesn't mean he's a terrorist. He might be a jackass. He might be a criminal. But what are the chances? He's going to bomb the ranch. It's owned by the, uh, you know, the Smith family. He's really going to get them. I mean, what are you talking about? I mean, give me a break. But the dumbed down public who loves mercury in their vaccinations and can taste the fluoride deliciousness every time they go to the faucet thinks this is legitimate. John always telling me this, man, he could really throw a spiral. I better be taking notes. All right, let's continue with this. Funding. It's expensive to run a terrorist operation. Terrorists not only need to raise money, but they also need to transfer and spend it in a way that doesn't bring attention to themselves. Pause, Typical pause, 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 pause. They're telling you that terrorist operations, this is how dumb they think you are. Terrorist operations need funding. Well, if you believe the fictional account by the 9-11 Commission report, they'll tell you that a group of 19 people, possibly 20, because there were several 20th hijackers, Zacharias Musawi and two other guys were supposedly the 20th hijacker. Ooh! They'll tell you 19 guys, really 20, well, we'll take the 20 number, make it really easy for the math. I know a lot of you out there are slow and you do really slow math, but they're telling you that the entire 9-11 operation cost them under $500,000. Now you divide that by 20. What do you get? You basically have, okay, basically have $25,000 a person. Okay, they were in the United States for years. You can't, you can barely live. You're just above the poverty line if you make $25,000 in a year. I've got Thomas Keene on video saying, well, that's what was so shocking about it. it the whole attack was carried out for really less than half a million dollars. That's not much funding, is it? That's not what they're telling you. Meanwhile, today on Fox News, they're once again admitting that the Pakistani ISI wired Muhammad Atta $100,000 just before the attacks. But we never attacked Pakistan, and they're our ally in the war on terror. Hmm. Makes you go, hmm. Meanwhile, terrorists are well-funded. We need to look at their funding. Let's keep keep with the clip. Let's let's keep doing this thing. Crimes we just for funding dogging. can be anything from drug and people trafficking to burglary <laughs> and sales of illegal merchandise. Pause it. They have also been known pause to pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. A guy selling balls of cocaine is now the terrorist. I got news for you. Muhammad Atta was a blow dealer. 
But uh, at the same time, that was part of his like black ops oper operation. You know, he was also testing security. The government deals the drugs. Get hip to their tricks. They're now they're telling you low level drug dealers, people who traffic in women, in other words, pimps. They're all terrorists. That's what this is establishing. Any sort of criminal is also a terrorist and is involved in terror funding. They just said the sale of illegal or knockoff items. So the guy in New York City trying to sell me the Oakleys that aren't Oakleys that are often referred to as Folkleys, he's a terrorist now because he's he's got five and ten dollar sunglasses. I mean, my my brain must be mush to believe this garbage, this propaganda. But hey, you know, football players, sports stars, they're telling me the truth. I got to believe them. He can throw a ball. I'm, let's get Patrick Ewing in here who can dunk a basketball like no other, and I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe it all. All right, let's keep going. Funnel money from charitable organizations and legitimate business operations. There are many signs to watch out for, such as witnessing an unusually large transaction that's paid for with cash or gift cards, and also being vigilant of donations toward a charity you've never Stop. heard of. Stop. If you now if you, if you use cash or gift cards, you're a terrorist. Gift card? All right, how many times have you seen anybody pay with anything with a gift card outside of a store like Best Buy or Blockbuster? Something tells me the local drug dealer on the street isn't going to take my Walmart card and say, here you go, buddy. It's just not going to happen. And if you deal in cash like I do, I deal in cash, I would say, with 80 to 90 percent of my transactions. When I pay my landlord the rent, it's almost a thousand dollars. That can be a hefty sum of money. So now when I pay rent, I'm a terrorist. Oh, no, terrorist Burmas went to pay his rent with, you know, it's all about the Benjamins. And now it looks like he's funding Al Qaeda. What is this? It's it's beyond over the top. Let's let's keep going with it. See something that may be suspicious, call the kayak immediately. Acquiring supplies. To conduct an attack, terrorists need a variety of supplies, which include weapons, transportation, and a communication system. You might observe a suspicious looking vehicle in a strange area, or come across to someone buying a number of one time use cell phones. You may even notice a garage filled with stockpiles of fertilizer, odd machinery, or even <laughs> weapons. Terrorists also use aliases to avoid suspicion and obtain access to their targets. Forging personal identification or passports and stealing or acquiring uniforms are all suspicious activities and should be reported immediately. Let me pause it right there. Suspicious persons. Okay, what they just showed, if you're not watching this on PrisonPlanet.tv, is a dude walking up to a car with a crowbar smashing out a window and grabbing a couple uniforms. Now correct me if I'm wrong, if you have any kind of sense in that pea-sized brain yours that rattles around in your overly extravagant skull and you saw somebody roll up to a car with a crowbar and smash out any window whatsoever, wouldn't that be a crime? Wouldn't that be something that you would call the police about? You take the thumb out of your butt and say, wow, that guy just smashed a car window. I better get on that one. But now he's a terrorist. Uh, it makes no sense. It, it Again, it is appealing to the lowest common denominator. I like sports. I drink beer. I listen to John Elway. Let's keep up with the video. Impersonation. When someone's behavior seems suspicious because of what they say or do, this could be a red flag. Terrorists will impersonate law enforcement, mail carriers, or company employees to gain information. If you see something that may be abnormal or have a gut feeling that something is just not right, call the kayak. All right, Reverse pause it right there. You see, if somebody is in a uniform and they are impersonating somebody else, more than likely that's a private security force or a member of intelligence. Okay, that's who usually... All right, let me give you an example. Last year, when we went to go get uh, hidden cameras for the Bilderberg conference, when uh, Alex and the crew were going out to Chantilly, Virginia, what do they have? Well, they have a bunch of fake cop uniforms. They have a bunch of polos that say NSA on them or Secret Service. Uh, again, posing as a law enforcement official. So these people that usually do this are private investigators, they're detectives, or they're actually intelligence agencies trying to disguise themselves as local law enforcement. 
a, a lot of which you saw in Pittsburgh. Let's be honest. A lot of those guys telling me that they were police while they were wearing military fatigues were actually National Guardsmen. Uh, I'll give you another example. A gentleman wearing a construction hat who had a, you know, sleeveless USMC T-shirt on and just looked like he was wearing